Hi, Keith here. Welcome to Keith's shop. This is my first uh, YouTube video that I'm recording and it's on a dust collector and dust collection techniques that I've designed and uh, built and I'm going to talk about in this video and actually it'll be a, a, a stage of videos. Um, the general concept of dust collecting, the choices, uh, how to um, uh, measure performance of them, and different uh, ways to uh, scratch that itch. Because I know there's a lot of different both homemade and commercial units available that you can buy to uh, collect dust efficiently in your shop. I'm going to talk about the goals that I was going for on designing this system for my shop. And then I'll go through each of the uh, fabrication steps, talking with uh, screen captures of as I went along during the fabrication process. Once it's done, I'm going to talk about how I tested it and the test data. And that's a piece that a lot of people just sort of gloss over, but I really want to uh, go through that in detail as to how I tested it and uh, the performance of it. So with that, thank you. I hope you like it. I'm interested in any feedback you have on this too. Thank you. Hello, I would like to acknowledge uh, these various uh, websites as well as other YouTube videos that inspired me to go ahead and uh, put some documentation together on this uh, design concept and the uh, build of the unit. Um, first one that uh, really jumps out is Bill Penn's uh, uh, detailed analysis of what really is needed in a uh, woodworking uh, cyclone separator that's uh, efficient enough to help protect our health and I thank you Bill for that then I started with then the uh, theme or the tying uh, top hat uh, dust collector build and there's a various ones on those on the um, on YouTube that I thought were uh, very helpful for me then uh, April had a great one on the uh, Harbor Freight dust collector uh, rebuild and um, uh, Sandra Powell, the Sawdust Girl, had a good one on also updating the uh, Harbor Freight Dust Collector. And really like Guy's uh, workshop one on the complete system build. He did a great job on that and very inspirational. And then I really like Todd Clippinger's uh, dust collection uh, update video that he had. Uh, all those were, I thought, very good and, and raised the bar for uh, me to put this together. Uh, the other the first book that really uh, jumped out at me for how to understand dust collection systems and how fans work and how static pressure and velocity pressure and all this work uh, was just a very simple book by David uh, Gingery and I found this on um, either eBay or Amazon and it wasn't much but it really goes through a lot of the f uh, various aspects of fan design. Uh, airflow physics and testing airflow static pressure. Um, I should probably mention at this point in time I am an engineer so I was really trying to dig into the details behind things and I uh, found this very helpful. And this is sort of where I started about 30 years ago. This is my old dust collector that was started with a um, old furnace blower that I got free from my grandfather and said you know I don't have much money I've got a little bit of time and lumber let me just throw something together and I was surprising surprised how well it worked I mean it, it does a pretty reasonable job I thought at doing dust collection until I measured the performance of it which is absolutely pathetic um, plus it, it's more of a chip collector than a dust collector a lot of the fine dust comes out of the um, uh, the bag here which isn't very fine and it, it's a bit of a pain to empty not too bad on the first uh, bin but the second bin is a real pain to empty and I find that I get still a lot of chips in the second bin also so anyway so that's where I was starting and I've used for about 30 years and I actually you, um, you're gonna see that I use the basic cart from this unit for the new one and it's only about two-thirds as long so footprint wise in the shop uh, the new ones may be a little bit taller but probably if you include the uh, blown up bag here it probably isn't that much taller yet it's about two-thirds um, uh, shorter so it actually takes up less space in my shop 
Okay, so this is uh, some data from uh, Bill Penz's website on on various equipment here that we see at the left and the um, size of the units here and the CFM requirement for a chip collection, OSHA requirements for dust collection, and these are somewhat of the numbers that I used for the equipment I have in my shop for uh, designing a dust collector. And I sort of figured between six and 800 CFM is really a good target airflow for what I was trying to build. So that's what I'm using as the basis in my shop for this design. And as it turns out, I was able to uh, pretty much hit that. And this is an example of various blower uh, fan curves from various commercial units. I didn't want to put the names of the, the units on. I think I got pretty much the data out of one of the woodworking magazines that may have been woodworking from years ago on uh, their evaluation of various uh, systems for doing dust collection. And you notice on the bottom is uh, CFM or cubic feet per minute and on the left is static pressure. And one of the things you need to be aware of is that a lot of the units, they'll sell a unit that says, oh, I can do a thousand CFM on this unit. And it will do up to, say, 14 inches of water column static pressure. What they don't tell you is it won't do those both at the same time. The truth is it curves somewhere in between. And, um, and obviously the, the higher you can get on, on static pressure for the airflow here on the bottom, the better off you're going to be. And again, I'm shooting somewhere between six and 800 CFM on my airflow. And I don't know, if I can do that probably about at eight, uh, at eight inches water column, that's probably pretty good. And um, that's, what, uh, that's what I'm shooting for. The other thing that's important to know is these curves that the uh, that were measured on these units, they're new units with the filters not um, coated with dust or, or charged with dust and it uh, they can back off quite a bit as uh, they start filling up with dust. So I'm trying to get as much um, airflow through my filters as I can and not have them be clogged up. So I want the separator part of the front end of the system to be as efficient as possible so you're not clogging up the filters. Okay, the other aspect of the system is pipe resistance. And on this particular case, I'm showing what various pipe sizes are and their static pressure for 100 feet based on the CFM. So we start with a two inch airflow here at the left, or the pipe at the left side, and we notice that um, to be able to get much airflow at all, it's really high um, static pressure, way higher than a uh, particular blower for our home shops would use. So two inches is out of the question. Um, I know a lot of uh, woodworking companies and supplies sell two inch or two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch hose for doing dust collection and it, don't fool yourself. It's really not dust collection. It's more of a, a vacuum cleaner uh, or shop vac extension on that. If we go up to even three inches, okay, now we've gotten above 200 CFM, but still look at the static pressure even at 200. It's uh, up around 10. Again, not really what we're looking for. Again, we're looking for a target range, at least for my shop, anywhere between six and 800. If we go up to four inches, okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. We're at least getting within the target range of CFM, but the static pressure is at least 25, still way too high. And uh, we go up to five inches, okay, now maybe we're starting to get in shooting distance. Um, starting to get a little bit better. Six inches. Oh, now we're starting to get somewhere. We can get even up to 800 CFM with um, 
just a little bit over six inches of static pressure. That's acceptable. So that's going to be my target to use uh, six inch um, six inch pipe. Now, granted, this is a hundred feet, so this is assuming you're plumbing your shop for um, dust collection, and it's easy to get over a hundred feet once you start putting in elbows and and um, and Ys and things like and and particularly flex hose it really starts adding up quite a bit and I'm not going to go into uh, in this uh, video the the description of how you actually go through and do that design on doing equivalent to feet of straight pipe um, once you get into the elbows so that's been done in a number of woodworking magazines and also is available at uh, various of uh, the suppliers on the um, on the internet so I'm not going to go over that right now so the thing that really now you want to start talking about system performance and on this you're combining both the blower curves which are these lines here from the first graph we had and the pipe resistance. So in this case, I just settled on two pipe resistances, four inches and six inches. And again, these are the kind of curves that you get here on this. And again, this is for, these curves are for 100 feet equivalent of straight pipe. So once you start putting flex pipe in there and and elbows and such um, you say well my runs only 50 feet I'm not hundred feet well once you start adding some things in there I think you might be surprised that you are getting close to an equivalent of about hundred feet a run so for basis that's what I want to use but you can uh, design your own um, uh, length and get your own curve on here for uh, for whatever is uh, the sys you know in your system there so again, this is the entrance. So how is my system performance going to work? Well, let's say, for instance, I'm going to take this red line here, blower curve. Let's say that's my system blower curve here. And I have two different operating points. One, if I'm using six inch pipe, which would be this intersection right here. And that would be just a little over seven inches of static pressure. And I would be getting uh, about maybe 850 CFM equivalent out of that uh, performance of the um, of of that pipe length. If you had four inch pipe, you would be up here in this range. So it'd be about uh, a little over nine inches of static pressure, with about 300 CFM. You can see the huge difference between using four inch pipe and six inch pipe on how much increased CFM you're going to get. So that's that's the basis that we're going to be using on our system to understand the the uh, pipe uh, pipe size and the airflow through the system. And again, I'm shooting on using six inch pipe. And actually, the first go around of my system, I'm just using uh, flex pipe, but still, it's six inch flex pipe that I'm using. Now, let's look back at the old dust collector that I had. I actually went through and measured the CFM versus static pressure. And wow, what a, what a performing un unit it is. You know, the most I can get is three inches of static pressure out of it. And the most I can get is around uh, 200 CFM. But in reality, I'm somewhere in between in actually operating my system and it's just not very good. It's not even a very good chip collector based on Bill Penz's chart that I showed earlier. So it's actually pretty pathetic. And I actually show this as compared to the other dust collector that I built uh, when we get to the end here. Anyway, that's just a quick run through of static pressure and, and, and velocity or CFM through the pipes. And the next video uh, will be looking at actually the design of the unit itself, the goals I'm going to be looking for, and how I start building the thing. And I thank you for watching and look for part two.